So it's Gregory Arcaro. It's been a while. I've been traveling, I've been moving, making things happen, doing the hustle. Because mighty things are about to go down on the earth plane. Mighty things. And so, what I've been working on is figuring out how to dance with all of it. How to juggle my way through all this craziness, all this love, all this potential. So, I moved to Asheville, Asheville, North Carolina. Magical things are happening here. Lots and lots and lots of magical things. Like I just happened to come across someone who I've known online through Project Avalon for a while, and they're here, and uh, there's a bunch of land. Um, this isn't the first time something's happened here like this in terms of land manifesting, resources manifesting, like a machine shop to build coils to change the world, save the world, create free energy. Because uh, I think I've remembered, I've been starting to phrase things, I've remembered how this works. And uh, I'm going to execute it. I'm going to be decisive. I'm going to use my free will. I'm going to execute this. I have the team. I have the location, I have the tools, I have the research, I have the funding, I have the heart, I have the desire, and I have the responsibility and the respect of this technology and how to utilize it on the material plane and on the metaphysical plane. And so, crazy things are going down, as I said. Colorado, earthquake, bounce. Virginia, earthquake, maybe bounce back. And again, what happens if the earth keeps growing and growing and growing, and all of a sudden you're still getting this bounce back ping pong effect. These plates are starting to get a resonation and they're just going to keep vibrating, vibrating. It just boggles the mind. The whole hurricane thing too. That's a big vortex. That's a really big vortex. And that's why I came here. This vortex is, 24 active vortexes supposedly in the actual area. It's Mount Pisgah. It's already been some dy dynamic things about having about that. Supposedly there's been lights shining above Pisgah for the past month on and off. I haven't seen them yet. I'm going to go see them myself hopefully soon. Um, some of the electrical activity. And uh, Mount Pisgah is on the other side of the, the Valley of Asheville. Well, on the other side, directly across it, is uh, Mount Mitchell, tallest mountain on the East Coast. It's interesting, you got like these two peaks in the valley. You know, it's like that uh, superconductivity. Uh, pattern found in um, seven vortex geometry. Two light charges around the opposing charge. So what I've been doing is looking with the geometry in terms of tubes, boundary layers. I'm just saying all of reality in boundary layers. Right now, it's a boundary layer between my external persona, my internal persona. I let my internal bleed a bit into my, my external. So I think that's what sometimes makes these videos interesting, along for other type of indigos. We just have to meld our realities together. It's pretty fun. Um, but everything is composed of boundary layers, and a long time people have been looking at the boundary layers in terms of donuts. And the thing is, uh, there's geometry within those donuts and outside of those donuts in terms of how things flow. And the easiest way to understand the hexagram is instead of creating, painting two circuits around a donut with three points each to make a hexagram, you take two tubes, two tubes like so, and you spiral them together and connect them to themselves. What's interesting is when you have two tubes, you have three points of extreme. You have a balance point in the center and two points on the outside. Electrons, they say, likes to travel on the outside of conductors. Um, you know, I like to clean that to more compressed magnetic flow. So I've been thinking about it lately. And, uh, well, if, if you like to go on the outside, say you do a centrifugal force, you start to spiral this tube, we start to make all these little spirals with it, and we can create helixes and Celtic knots and all those crazy things. Um, you can create pathways of the tubes without doing windings, but just twistings. And if you have these compressions on the outside, you have expansion in the center, and um, you start to create this superconductive geometry or energy which just wants to flow and move and dance and do all these crazy things. Just like so, we got these two fields compressing on the outside with the vacuum in the center. And that, my friends, is what's coming up the East Coast 
right now as we speak. Compression around that room. The mighty vortex. The question is what do you do when you start to understand the power of the vortex? You build it, you breathe it in, you share it. I think I'm doing it all. It makes me think of the three minds. As Plato said, reason, passion, spirit. I've been like to, to identify myself as a scientist, an artist, and a philosopher. Now you can take this comprehensive thought process and put it all together, and it creates a very dynamic perspective on reality. This thing it is right here. Operating manual for Spaceship Earth. Yeah. Buck Mr. Fuller. He talks about the comprehensive free thinker, and has one of the most dynamic individuals in our reality in terms of how they influence this reality. And if you are a free thinker, and you start to have a comprehensive perspective on the world, thinking for yourself, and you start to realize there's other free thinkers around you, and you can go, hey, you do this job, you do this job, you do this job, and you're the center point between all this specialization, things can start to revolve around you. It, it, it makes me think about the number 13, you got the 12 zodiac, and 12 apostles, 12 potential knights who can save this reality. Well, when you get these 12 individuals working in unison, a 13th entity is born. And you might call that the avatar, you might call that love, call it what you will. But the one thing I have been confident with my perspective for some time is how the drum beat is playing out. And it's picking up. Pick it up nice and slow. And where that drum beat's going? I don't know. But the binds, talk about this 13 note harmonic. And if you think, and it ends October 28, 2011, the current harmonic. And some people are like, oh, what's going to happen October 28th? But what's going to happen December 21st, 2012? Which means that that's a calendar reset. This calendar is actually editing, ending. But when a song is counting down towards, it comes to the end, from my best recollection, 100% of all music I've ever listened to, it doesn't kick right at the end. Um, same with movies. The climax is, you know, like maybe four-fifths of the way through or something. So, 13 cycles, what about the 12th cycle, beginning September 23rd? I had my own little perspective, and I woke up from a dream, sat straight up out of it, don't remember the dream, but I'll remember September 23rd, which is the equinox, the beginning of the 12th mind cycle. Man becomes aware of himself and learns the name of God. So what's going to happen at that point? At that very point is where the energies on the planet are balanced between the light and the dark where the, the, the solar day and the night day are balanced along the poles and um, it's the end of the fourth, card, fourth quarter economically but does that really matter in terms of what I've been feeling feeling that's radiating out from the future is a transition, a very powerful transition, and a start of a continuous transition that we've been moving into, but a new stage. I went to school for classics before I dropped out, mainly due to vortex-based mathematics. Thank you, Marco. Um, appreciate you bringing me out of that institution with this beautiful free thought mathematics. Well, that's funny. Jack, you just randomly popped up on YouTube with the Arturo Triad coil. I don't know how you popped up, but I'm building a hexagram starting tomorrow. There's a little synchronicity for you. Um, the way I want to, because I have everything I need to do it. Um, I think it's going to influence the world a bit. It's going to be pretty fun. But uh, consciousness, where's it going? This week? It's going to be interesting next month. I think it's going to be really, really interesting. And 
the interesting thing is how there's all these people around me in my life and people I interact with and it seems like the only people who resonate with me um, about what's about to go down, a lot of them are stuck in fear, but not all of them. Some of them are there, like just there. Love you guys. And uh, there's a lot of fear with others. And personally, I like to cock block that fear. We don't need any of that. No, no survival, all sustainability. That's where it's at. Permaculture, yeah. And uh, I'm going to sustain myself through this game so I can enjoy this experience and have fun and learn as much as I can and uh, fall in love consistently every day. Love that vertigo. So, had to state that. Anyways, I think there's a lot of assumptions about tomorrow and there is ignorance about the cycles, the cycles of our reality and how they interweave. That, I mean, gained an understanding. Not a complete understanding, but an understanding. An understanding that's made me feel comfortable about how I interact with those cycles. So right now, my current focus on anything is productivity. Complete, unadulterated productivity. Just bam, 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 all the time. It's pretty good. Um, greenhouses, coils, love making, fire making, fire dancing, so many good things. But there's this comet business. And the comet, I think it likes to eat the solar wind. It's like pure matter, it just like chumps it. The black hole of the comet chumps it. It's like a gravity well and it like sucks the solar wind in and it spits it back out, but like makes the hydrogen dance. And while it dances and puts the protons in a specific pattern, the neutrons manifest out of the ether, being they're balanced. Um, and uh, you then send water out into space, and as it rapidly expands, it turns to ice. And so you always see the white hole of the comet away from the sun and spewing out water and gas and other things, which probably lead to how planets are created. And somehow, intuitively, I do feel like there's an octahedral crystal in the center of the Earth. Hollow Earth theory, 100% there, makes perfect sense. Completely on board, love the stuff. And um, uh, that the, the outer layer is the compression, you know, compression around vacuum, like I was saying. Um, uh, where was it going? Oh, elements. I really like talking about the elements. This is a good tangent to go on right now. You got, you know, you got earth, and then you have water. We're becoming a water plant as the crust expands and the continents pull apart and the oceans get bigger and uh, consciousness evolves. We sell with whales. Whales operate as a group. One whale beaches itself. More come along. Um, they're, they're very intelligent, those cetaceans. Um, cetaceans? They have a name for them. Intelligent little guys. Uh, water plant, and then we become a gas plant, Jupiter. And so as the sun burns, this Jupiter is going to get bigger because all the plants are growing. And when it's gravitational hold, hold, the gravitational hold of the sun can no longer hold on to that of the Jupiter, which is really an electromagnetic effect. It's like gravitation. Um, and uh, Jupiter will be released from the solar system. The king will be gone. It's also like the density midpoint. If you look at electron shells, um, they, uh, the, the midpoint of the electron shells is the densest. Um, Jupiter, for example. And so Jupiter will be released from the solar system. When Jupiter is released, um, it'll suddenly go outside the magnetosphere of the sun, no longer protecting it and its valuable little solar nursery. And from moving very fast around our galaxy, friction will cause it to ignite. Poof! All the gas starts burning um, because it's releasing, turning this gas into plasma, creating a uh, greater electromagnetic field, thus creating a greater magnetosphere. Thus, Jupiter can become its own solar nursery, giving rise to future plants and the um, overlaying interactive compression points of the magnetic field gives birth to comets. The comets then feed um, somehow with the crystal part. I haven't thought, figured out the crystal part. Just like that's pure intuition I'm going with there. There's the whole octahedral crystal in the center of a planet and it expands around this crystal, the octahedron being the core. I love that thing. That is officially my favorite piece of geometry. End of story. And I also made magnetite 
in the machine shop today from heating up iron really hot, you know, flakes off, heating up magnetite, great stuff, easy way to harvest it. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, it just feels in my heart, you know, it is sort of like the heart of the plant, it's an octahedron. So, so from comet to crystal, um, I can see how things being formed in terms of the crust around this, but how does the actual octahedral crystal come to birth? That's a good question. One to think about and ponder, all of us. Maybe as a collective human subconscious, we can start to pull our minds together and um, figure that one out, because it sounds like fun. But in the meantime, I'm going to be building and exploring permaculture and polyamory and um, uh, Christ consciousness and free energy and more metaphysics, lots and lots of metaphysics. And um, if you see me on the streets, Give me a hug. Not a handshake, a hug. No more handshakes anymore. It's old school. So, it's been nice talking to you all. I'm in Asheville. Things are happening. Light workers are moving here. This place is turning into its own, like, East Coast Sedona Mecca, but not as touristy. Better because there's lots of trees and it's green. My favorite color is tree, so that's why you should come to Asheville. Because this is, the whole place is colored tree. It's pretty awesome, like, 100 foot tall tree. And, um... I mean, that's what the Tesla Towers are, a tree. So a better place to study a tree than here. And then we can use some bio... Um, symmetry? That's not symmetry. I can't remember that word. We'll, um, we'll say the trees and we'll replicate the trees. We'll make really powerful trees and we'll create good vibes and support the flow and, you know, bring the Freemasons back up to... or relive what the Freemasons did and rebuild the ley lines um, and uh, make this... Uh, make the whole planet start dancing and flowing and feeling good vibes and um again yeah, Asheville place to be you should be like here because things are happening like here a few days ago there was a topless protest downtown epically cool I felt like revolution was happening it felt so good this is like where the self is meeting like awesomeness and so there's just great polarization conflict goodness growth so much growth here I'm going to dance church on Sunday. Can't wait. One of the coolest things I've ever been to. Um, and, uh, yeah. Things are about to get crazy. Yeah. Asheville. Crazy. Asheville crazy. I like it. Well, um, <sighs> adios, everyone. I, I hope you enjoyed me. I've been gone for a while. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go enjoy me right now, and uh, maybe we can enjoy us sometime. So I will check you later, and adios, namaste.